I feel like Adventureland saw my RIP video for Adventure Falls and was like, no need, East Coaster fan, you don't need to predict anything anymore. Here's our five-year plan. And I'm all for it. What's up guys, I'm the East Coaster fan, and today we're going to be talking about the bombshell that Adventureland just dropped. Oh my god. Adventureland Long Island just announced a $10 million redevelopment plan for the next five years. So that goes from 2024 this year all the way to 2028. Just for a bit of reference, Turbulence in 2015 cost only $5 million to create, and Fireball in 2022 only cost two million dollars so 10 million over the course of five years that's a lot of capital for adventure on long island and as they said in the announcement for this which could be found on sites like newsday or greater long island this has been years in the making my guess is that it's been in the works ever since fireball but who knows it could have been in the works far longer than that and it's mainly centering around the back half of the park, or I guess it's the front part now. This area was formerly known as Pirate's Cove, but now it's going to be known as Legacy Corner. A bit of an interesting name, but I guess it's supposed to represent the legacy that Adventure Run has had for so many years. At first, when they announced the name of this area as Legacy Corner, a day before the whole plan was revealed, I thought this whole area was going to be about Legacy Rides. Similar to how, like, Knobles does it. But I do think this is just in the name itself. So I feel like with all the news that dropped with this five-year plan, I go into it in more detail and let you know what is on the docket for Adventureland. But before we do that, if you're interested in keeping up with Adventureland Long Island footage, as well as all of my journeys throughout different amusement parks and such, be sure to subscribe to this channel. We do plenty of videos like this and much more. Also, feel free to leave a like and comment. I want to hear your thoughts. But let's dive deep first into this year, 2024. It started with the announcement of both Adventure Falls and Pirate Ship leaving the park. This has been rumored for many years prior to this, but it was officially confirmed to be leaving during this offseason. In fact, I was the one who broke the news of Adventure Falls officially being dismantled. Bit of bragging rights there. What was really interesting in the press release, and that I never really noticed before, is that according to the park itself, Adventure Falls took up about 5 or 10% of the land at Adventureland. Which, keep in mind, Adventureland already is a small park. And 5-10% may not seem like a lot, but it is massive. You could fit something huge in that plot of land. So why were these two rides removed? Well, they answered that question too. It was due to age as well as the operating calendar. First, let's start with age. Pirate Ship, like I mentioned in my RIP video, was added in 1987 and was the second oldest ride in the park. And then Adventure Falls was added in 2001. But whenever I visited the park, it seemed like people were still riding these attractions, so ridership was definitely not at fault here. But then that second reason, operating calendar, and I think this has to do more so with Adventure Falls. This ride was interesting because I always remember going to the park that this ride would open late. So when you got to the park right at opening, there was probably not a chance of Adventure Falls being open. You had to wait till like the afternoon. Plus, it's a water ride. It has to be the right temperature in order to make sure it's not too cold for the riders. But going back to what I mentioned before, I think the land was really the key issue for taking out these attractions, just to open up the park and add something new. So that's what they did. In addition to Junior Pirate Ship replacing spinning cars, a bit more towards Kittyland section, it was confirmed officially that Moon Chaser, a Huss Topspin, would be replacing the Pirate Ship. Now this is something I've been wanting to talk about on the channel for so long now, but I wanted to wait for an official announcement. Keep in mind, I've known about this now for I think two weeks or so. There was a leaked photo going around the internet, and when I saw this leaked photo, I was so excited. For a multitude of reasons too. This was the first thrill ride addition to Adventureland since Frisbee was added in 2006. And then going back one year prior, this is the first ride at Adventureland to send riders upside down since the top scan left the park. 
So there's been a whole generation of park goers going to Adventure Line who've never seen an upside down ride at this park, including myself. So it's a big deal in itself that a thrill ride is coming to Adventureland, a park that considers itself a family park, but is something I've wanted for so long. And for it to be a Huss Topspin, oh my god. <laughs> for those who don't know, a Huss Topspin is slowly becoming a more and more rare attraction. In fact, the only other one in the US now is that Six Flags Great Adventure, Twister, which I've been on and really enjoy. So now Adventureland Long Island now joins the ranks of another park in the US with a Huss Topspin. Now this is still a transportable ride, but this isn't something new for Adventureland. They've done stuff like this in the past. For example, Frisbee is actually a transportable ride. You can actually see wheels and like panels and a bunch of other stuff that could easily be assembled together and just shipped away any day now. Also, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is the highest height restriction that Adventureland's ever had for a ride. You need to be at least 55 inches to get on Moon Chaser. Comparing that to other rides in the past, the only one that really comes to mind is the bumper cars, where you need to be at least 50 inches in order to drive by yourself, which is a little weird in my opinion. So it'll be really interesting to see how many kids are turned away at this attraction for being too short. But God, I am so excited for Moon Chaser and I'm really eager to see how it rides compared to Twister. From the videos that Adventureland already released on social media, the ride already looks like it has a great program with it that will send you upside down a few times during the ride. But I think overall this is going to be a great addition for the park. The one other change that was confirmed for 2024 is that City Hall, at least the first aid area, is now going to be sponsored by Catholic Health and now known as the Catholic Health Health First Aid Center. And this is actually part of a bigger sponsorship that this company is doing with the park, as they're now considered the main sponsor of Adventureland. I don't know what that's gonna mean, honestly. We're gonna have to just wait and see. But the company itself has been involved in things like the Easter Egg Hunt and Pumpkin Park, so it's not a new company for Adventureland. They've interacted for many years. But to our knowledge, those are the only changes coming to Adventureland this year. I'm sure there's gonna be plenty more smaller things that I'll notice when I go to the park for opening weekend. But now we're gonna continue to 2025 with a really interesting addition. In 2025, Adventureland will be adding a ride called Wave Twister. First you had Wave Swinger, and now you have Wave Twister. Hopefully that won't confuse people. But this is going to be the world's first RES, or Ride Engineer Switzerland, Wave Twist L. So for reference, a Wave Twist is a really interesting model. It's sort of like a disco, but has two different ends. And each of these ends spin. The layout itself has a bit of a curve to it, so it's not just a straight shot that the normal discos have, but almost resemble more of an L. It's going to be located in the Adventure Falls plot, but all the way towards the back. Now, the park had an issue here though. What are we going to do with the train tracks? The train, as you recall, would travel around the back of Adventure Falls, so the park decided to elevate it a bit, making the ride a bit taller. And if you zoom into the video that Adventure Run released to social media, you can notice a partial tunnel. Now it's not a full tunnel, I did think that at first, but you can see a little bit of an opening on the inside. So when you're curving around, you will only be seeing inside the park, no longer outside. Kind of keeping you in the realm of Adventureland. I don't know what the views are going to be like in this partial tunnel, it's probably going to be nothing special except ramps going up to the ride. But it is an interesting addition, and it's a good way of getting around that problem. But going back to the Wave Twister, it's a really weird ride. <laughs> Something Adventure Run will do, that, especially that I've noticed for so many years going to the park, is they like working with similar ride manufacturers. There are a lot of kiddie rides in the park made by SBF Visa. They're getting another thrill ride made by Huss, the same company that gave them Frisbee and other attractions in the past. And now RES, the company that made Fireball, now giving them another ride. I'm not sure if there was some like two for one deal maybe they did, or they probably just like working for RES. But it'll be really interesting to see how this ride performs in the park. It's another spinning attraction, which Adventure Run already has a lot of those in the park. But I'm curious how many people are gonna be dizzy or feeling sick after this ride. Regardless, I'm excited to check it out. It's a new attraction and a new model, which makes this very unique to the park. 
There were two other things announced for 2025, otherwise known as phase two of this plan. First will be the construction of new restrooms and concession stands located within this area. Now it's weird because they do have restrooms and concessions kind of further out from Legacy Corner, right where you enter the park. I'm not sure if that's gonna be considered a part of Legacy Corner now, or they're gonna build brand new ones pretty close. If I had to guess, it would be the renovation of the area, which is a little weird because I feel like they renovated that area not too long ago. That's the bathroom, by the way, that has Albert right above it. But if they're really interested in giving this whole area a refresh or adding a new one, I say, why not? A little bit of sad news is that 2025 is gonna involve the removal of the antique cars. Now, I'm not sure if this means 2024 is the last season or if 2025 is the last season for the antique cars. But regardless, this does open up some space within Adventureland. And you betcha I'm gonna do a rip on the antique cars once that's confirmed to be gone. It's definitely sad to see antique cars go, but once again, this could lead to a lot of new possibilities for that area. But I am gonna miss that bridge. I hope they keep that for something because that's just such a picturesque area of the park over there. And then there are the final three years, 2026, 2027, and 2028. Details are still a little bit iffy on these years. However, it was confirmed that at least two rides are going to be coming within the three year span. So I'm guessing one ride per year and then one of the years is just gonna have nothing except probably park improvements. However, the one interesting line actually came from the GM of Adventureland, Steve Gentili, who said whatever is gonna be added to this section of the park is gonna be the heart of Legacy Corner. I don't know what that means, but it could mean a lot of things. A few other things I found online about this redevelopment plan. One is that by 2028, the park hopes to increase their employment by 10%. So that's good for the park and good for the town of Farmingdale that the park's located in. But there was one more interesting point that was stated by Adventureland, more specifically talking about Moonchaser. Now I want to start off by saying this is just a theory of mine, so don't treat it as fact, this is all speculation. But the park said, this ride, talked about Moonchaser here, is unique because it is currently the only one in the park that goes upside down. Now that word currently is interesting because does that mean another upside down ride's coming to the park? Maybe an upside down roller coaster, that would be an awesome addition. Or it could always just be staying the fact, it's the only one in the park right now to go upside down, who knows. And then there's two other thoughts I have about Legacy Corner, and this is about preserving some of the things that were in Pirate's Cove before. First are the elements of the train that were towards that back Adventure Falls area. If you remember, there were both a bunch of animal statues that were fun to look at during the train ride, as well as some pieces of historical Adventureland stuff, such as the loop that was on the mini golf course. I'm hoping that the park saves these things as part of their archive. Touring the maintenance facility from last year's Preservation Con, the park clearly loves to keep a lot of their older stuff, and sometimes they even put it randomly in the park itself. And that also goes for my next point. What is going to happen to the giant pirate statue? This is the giant statue that was located right next to the pirate ship, and this thing's ginormous. I don't know where they put it in the park, but it's such a classic having that giant pirate right there. I'm not sure where it would go, but I wouldn't want to see it go. I'd say it's just as iconic as the talking tree. So there you go. That is both Legacy Corner and a full explanation slash analysis of the redevelopment plan coming to Adventure on Long Island. I can't believe they're doing a $10 million redevelopment. That is just crazy to me. And as a lifelong fan of this park, I am so excited for the future and what it has to hold. Now, could they use a little bit of that budget to fix the talking tree again? 